بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویل دس از مدیحا ظہیر فرام ڈپارٹمنٹ آف زولوجی بینک روڈ کیمپس آف یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لاہور اسٹوڈنٹس یو نو دیٹ وی آر ڈسکسنگ دا ٹاپک کو ایولوشن سو ٹوڈے وی گو نا ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ریمیننگ اور ریسٹ آف دا پارٹس اور ریسٹ آف دا کائنڈس آف دا کو ایولوشن ایز یو نو دیٹ ان آر فرسٹ پارٹ وی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا اونلی فرسٹ اور اونلی ون کائنڈ آف دا کو ایولوشن سو ٹوڈے وی گو نا کمپلیٹ دس ٹاپک اینڈ وی ول ڈسکس دا ریسٹ آف دا ٹائپس آف دا کو ایولوشن وتھ دیئر examples now uh, just to make you remember the first type that in the first part we have discussed uh, about three types of the coevolution and we just talked about and explained the only first type that was the parasite host coevolution today we will discuss uh, predator prey coevolution and beneficial or mutualistic type of the coevolution Okay, the, now the second kind of coevolution is predator-prey coevolution. Predator-prey coevolution is somewhat uh, similar to the parasite host coevolution. Now, first of all, let's have the precise definition of uh, this type of coevolution. Uh, predator-prey coevolution is the process by which evolution of increased defensive ability in prey causes increased selective pressure for exploitative ability or for you may say the predating ability in predators and vice versa right so uh, from this definition what uh, could you uh, conclude that uh, this kind of coevolution leads to the changes in the prey that uh, makes the prey become more defensive and uh, in a response it leads to the changes in the predator that become more exploitative or more uh, get more strong in its predating abilities and this process continues and it wise we saw also right so uh, let's take an example of this kind of uh, coevolution uh, butterflies and bird coevolution butterflies and bird coevolution uh, here the birds are predators and butterflies are the prey many birds feed on butterflies but they tend to avoid some kinds of butterflies which are poisonous or uh, distasteful or in bad taste um, birds used to eat butterflies but birds avoid the unpleasant uh, butterflies with unpleasant taste right or uh, that have a very bitter taste or very poisonous taste so to avoid being eaten by the birds what do the butterflies do how do they evolve mostly butterflies evolve to look more like the monarch monarch is a butterfly kind of the butterfly that feeds on the milk wheat plants so uh, because of the feed of the milk wheat plants uh, the taste of the monarch butterfly is somewhat uh, bitter so uh, it um, gives the very dist uh, it gives the very bad taste or it is very distasteful to the birds so uh, birds try to avoid monarch uh, in their food Uh, so in response to uh, this what happened and other butterflies that are sweet in taste or that are uh, tasteful uh, try to mimic the monarch so uh, they try to look like the monarch butterflies so they could be not be eaten by the birds uh, here i have given the example of the viceroy butterfly viceroy butterfly uh, was previously of um, in uh, past years or in uh, previous times it was uh, black and white color but uh, because it got predated by the birds bec- uh, 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 because of having the good taste so it tried to evolve its look or it mimics its look and it, it, it try to gain the w- uh, colors of the monarch butterfly here if you see like here this is the uh, monarch butterfly uh, whose taste is very bitter and this is the viceroy butterfly for so this butterfly evolves or this butterfly mimics the uh, monarch butterfly and try to uh, got the uh, try to have the same colors as do the monarch butterfly has so um, if you see the difference can you look here 
this is the minaret butterfly. Uh, you may say this is the model and this is the mimic. The butterfly who mimics is known as the mimic and who uh, whose color it has mimicked is known as the model here. Minaret is the model and Viceroy is the uh, mimic. So it got or it mimics the colors color pattern of the minaret butterfly uh, to um, save itself from being eaten by the birds uh, this is the difference uh, this is monarch and this is the viceroy here you could see that there is a line that is intersecting its veins so the butterfly that has the line that interse intersecting the veins is the viceroy butterfly here you could see that there is no line that is inter intersecting the veins this is the difference between these two Okay, here I have given one cycle uh, that represents the uh, coevolution between the species. If you remember the definition of the coevolution, what we said in that definition, we said that the coevolution is the evolutionary process that takes place between uh, two or more than two species, right? So previously we have talked or we have taken the example of the uh, two species coevolution. Here you could see that there are the three species that are coevolving uh, with each other. Uh, in response to each other like uh, uh, we have uh, talked about the monarch and the viceroy butterfly here in this cycle you could see that the birds feed on mimic butterfly now this is the viceroy or mimic butterfly previously as i told you that it did not have the same color uh, now when it got uh, uh, a mimicry uh, what happened that uh, evolves to look more like in edible monarch what does of evolution took place here that it has changed its color and was more like the monarch now uh, this uh, will help the mimic that it could save to some extent itself from being eaten by the birds but did this is very uh, uh, disadvantages for the uh, model butterfly or the monarch butterfly why because once if the bird has eaten the uh, mimic butterfly or viceroy butterfly then bird could think that it is a very sweet in taste it is very tasty so it could accidentally eat the there uh, the chance of being eaten by the birds for the monarch butterfly would be increased right in this case so increased chance the, that monarch will accidentally be eaten by the birds now what happened in response to this mimicry in monarch now monarch will evolve and it will try to change uh, to look less like the mimic evolves to look less like the mimic so monarch is again inedible to the birds but during this process the birds will also evolve firstly they could uh, uh, catch easily the uh, viceroy butterfly and the monarch butterfly but once the viceroy butterfly mimic the monarch butterfly then they got confused between two right so they evolved to better spot the difference between the mimic and the monarch this is the this is the another step of the coevolution uh, that is taking place in the birds they evolve their uh, trait to that could better discriminate between the model and the mimic butterflies now if you read here uh, this creates problem for birds which have to get better at spotting the difference between the two and the birds actually may be directly involved in the entire coevolutionary complex right this is the entire coevolutionary co complex between the monarch viceroy and the birds since they may be under selection for better powers of discrimination now selection pressure would increase in birds to become more selective or more discriminative um, between the two uh, two uh, not birds sorry between the two butterflies individuals that can tell the mimetic butterflies from the models or individuals that uh, can discriminate between the mimetic butterflies and the model butterfly will gain more nourishment at less cost and in time and effort right who have the uh, more power of discrimination and uh, then uh, in this way if you if they could discriminate between the monarch and the uh, viceroy butterfly they could have the better nourishment and they could in this way they could save their time as well as their efforts their energy so this is uh, another very um, good example of the coevolution okay now the third and last type of the coevolution that is the mutualistic or beneficial coevolution now um, 
you could better understand even with the name of this type of, of the evolution the evolution that is taking place between the species that are in very good and pretty relationship with each other and uh, provides benefits to each other rather than as we compared them to the previous two types uh, so let's uh, first talk about the proper definition of the uh, mutualistic coevolution in mutualistic coevolution organisms that rely on each other for something evolve together thanks to unconscious cooperation a sort of unstated negotiation or compromise no it is what that both species that are in mutual a relationship evolves uh, such that that the uh, trait change in the trait of one would help uh, to the associated species so associated species uh, would also uh, get the change to help the uh, the first one so um, let's have an example hummingbirds and flowering plants uh, there is a wide range of hummingbirds there are a lot of different species of hummingbirds and hummingbirds are associated with flowering plants just to have their food their nectar as their food and uh, in turn they help the plant in dispersal of the pollen grains so for plant uh, uh, their pollen grains is very important um, to got dispersed uh, for the cross fertilization uh, plants usually do the cross fertilization so for this uh, to increase their population it is very necessary that their pollen grains would be dispersed on a wide range so this dispersal uh, is done by the uh, hummingbirds and uh, on the other hand hummingbirds got the very sweet nectar of the flowers now let's uh, read it uh, hummingbirds and flowering plants both flowers and hummingbirds benefit when hummingbird comes buy for a drink and take pollen grains with them for dispersal as a result species of hummingbirds and species of flowers often evolve together now the flowers trying to become more colorful more presentable they evolve themselves to become more colorful more presentable and uh, try to evolve to have a, a better taste of the nectar and on the other hand birds try to have the um, birds try to evolve their bills or their beaks just to get to reach the um, nectar and to reach the pollens of the flower in turn the flower species it feeds from has evolved to produce nectar specially tasty to hummingbirds and to prevent bees and other animals from stealing it now uh, flowers also protect their hummingbirds uh, how oh, uh, once they um, uh, provide hospitality by having the tasty uh, nectar and also they prevent the other animals uh, especially bees uh, from uh, drinking the their nectar so they evolve to produce such kind of nectar that uh, is not been uh, drunk by the bees and other animals so coevolution of such flowering plants with various hummingbird species is evident by the distinct shape and length of the flowers crawler tubes which have adapted to the shape and length of the hummingbird bill that pollinates that plant now this is very important um, step or this is very important lines for uh, the hummingbirds and the flower how do they co-evolve uh, flowers co-evolve hummingbirds try to co-evolve their beaks uh, like the flowers crawler tubes if the flowers have the long crawler tubes then they uh, have the long they evolve themselves to have the long beaks different species of hummingbirds have differently shaped beaks that evolve to allow them to drink from a certain kind of flowers okay this is another example of the mutualistic coevolution beneficial coevolution and that is the coevolution of orchids and moth orchids and moth both have a beneficial relationship with each other and uh, you could say that time really really witnessed this uh, a kind of coevolution between orchids and moth but uh, darwin was such an intellectual uh, you could say such an intellectual man that he uh, predicted this evolutionary mechanism between orchids and moth uh, for for approximately uh, approximately 40 years back when it was uh, proven so uh, let's uh, talk about and let's read this type of the coevolution here in this picture you could say you could see uh, this is the moth 
and this is the proboscis of the moth or uh, tongue of the moth and this is the orchid plant and this is known as the star orchid uh, and these are also known as uh, the darwin orchids right okay let's read it charles darwin prescribed or described and um, charles darwin described an interesting case of pollinator flowering plant coevolution in madagascar uh, madagascar uh, is actually the uh, it is an island country in the Indian Ocean. Uh, previously, it was known as a uh, Malagasy, but now uh, it has renamed. Uh, it is now called the Madagascar Republic, right? So uh, he described this relationship in Madagascar between the orchid plants, between uh, which species of the orchid? This one, uh, the star orchid. Its scientific name is Agrigacium uh, sesquipedale. When Darwin examined this orchid, he predicted that the long-tongued moth would be found that pollinated it. No moth with that extreme length of tongue was known at that time. Uh, moth that uh, pollinated the orchid, star orchids at that time were uh, had the long proboscis or long tongue but not that much long so Darwin predicted that uh, there would be a moth in future or there would be the evolution in the tongue length of the moth that could um, match this uh, long crawler or of the star orchids so then in 1903 he was proven correct when long tongue moth was discovered Okay, the Madagascar star orchid uh, has a 25 centimeter long corolla tube. Here you could see the 25 centimeters, 25 approximately 25 centimeter long corolla tube, and nectar is present at the base of the uh, tube. So the modern sphinx moth has now 30 centimeter long proboscis or tongue. This is you could say it is more than the length of the entire. Uh, moth you could say it is almost the double of the length of the moth itself right so a moth could need such a long tongue because it has adapted to its main food source that is the orchids or darwin orchids now you could see um, the development or the uh, you could see that adaptations of one species in response to the change in the other species uh, this would be more clear to you in the next here. As the moth with shorter tongue died of starvation, only moths with longer tongue survive and reproduce. Whenever we talk about the Darwin process of evolution or Darwin's theory of evolution, we always read there that uh, Darwin said that variability already existed in the population. And uh, nature just selects the uh, individuals with more fit test very uh, variety right so here the same case happened here that uh, previously you see in this picture here firstly the uh, moth uh, sorry uh, star orchids uh, corolla length was like this and moth proboscis was uh, that of the length now uh, what happened uh, because of the this length of the moth in response to this length of the moth the star orchids uh, uh, crawlers length become along uh, much more okay it got elongated with the uh, passage of time now in response to that much elongated moth uh, sorry that much elongated corolla tube the moth uh, also elongate its proboscis or its tongue to reach at the bottom of the corolla and to collect the nectar and to collect the pollen grains for dispersal now uh, you can see in this scenario if we uh, recall the darwin's theory of evolution that what happened there is already the variety of the long uh, variety of the moths with long proboscis were present in this population but with the passage of time the uh, natural selection selects the moths generation that were with the long long proboscis so same happened in this case so the orchid tubes got longer the moth tongues got longer so that both species could still receive the basics of life through their mutualistic relationship right both have the mutualistic relationship both co-evolve uh, in response to each other change in each other's trait and this was all about the co-evolution or changes that takes place jointly simultaneously together between the species all right 
okay students uh, thank you so much uh, now we are done with our topic of coevolution as you know that we completed its first type in part one and now in second type we have talked about the rest of the two types that is the predator prey coevolution and the second one was the beneficial coevolution predator prey coevolution was uh, somewhat same like that of the parasite host coevolution but the evolution of the uh, beneficial coevolution is uh, a properly entirely different kind of the coevolution than that of the first two types because in this case both species evolve to uh, provide benefits to each other in previous two cases the species evolved just to uh, get much stronger than the other species so uh, thank you so much hope you have would have understood everything and um, take care of yourself a lot a lot and uh, try to stay at home uh, take precautionary measures uh, to avoid the infection of the COVID-19. Uh, thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.